the capital, the financial capital of the world, protects a, a very, very important syndicate of very high-ranking people, and they are politicians, members of the House of Lords. If you check the directorship list of those companies, oil, gas, and mining companies, you will find what I found 10 years ago. It's, it's vile, billion-pound, organized crime, fraud, theft, and money laundering. This is not, this is nothing to do with genuine companies. I have been an expert at dismantling corporate oil, gas, and mining companies that are shell companies. That means that they're director-only companies that operate on the alternative investment market. The alternative investment market is a casino. It's a casino for organized crime, fraud, theft, money laundering, and insider trading. And if you know anything about the stock exchange and the penny stock, if you check some of the companies that I've exposed, I will name them. I'm not ashamed to name them, and I'm not scared to be called by the directors of those companies to face them in a court of law. I exposed five companies that operate purportedly in the Falkland Islands. They are Desire Petroleum, Rock Hopper Resources, Falklands Oil and Gas, Argus Exploration. These are some of the companies, including Border and Southern Petroleum, that are virtual companies. That means that they are director-only cash shells that by law only have to have a website and an AIM Rule 26 admission document. And then, as small startup companies, they can raise millions. Between those five companies, they raised over one billion pounds. It's all gone. They've stolen it. They've stolen it because they moved it to subsidiary companies structured in the British Virgin Islands, Panama, Cyprus. That money has been silted out of those companies, not just by say, not just by ordinary directors. These directors are nothing more than con artists, and they take you people for idiots. It's there. All you have to know is the keys to open those doors to look at those companies and understand how they can steal billions. Those are the companies that we should uh, get the politicians to investigate. You're talking about those addresses that I mentioned in Finchley Road. Anybody, anybody can use the internet and ask why two companies, Red Star Enterprises and Minocorp, were structured out of that address by the directors of those company administrators, Company Directors Limited and Temple Secretaries. Those companies have been put under inquiry by the United States Senate for stealing $1.5 billion of the American defense budget. Why didn't our David Cameron, Tony Blair, Gordon Brown, why didn't any of those stand up and say, why aren't we investigating those companies? Why aren't we checking those addresses to find out why there's 500,000 shell companies that have no financial records that tend to asset strip public listed companies which are fake oil, gas, and mining companies? They're talking about us running out of oil. If you check the alternative investment market, you will find that there are over 1,300 fake oil, gas, and mining companies all run by the same bunch of directors. Now, if you were to be £400 in debt every month, your bank would cut up your credit cards. How come these companies are allowed to raise billions? Billions, and there is no accountability. Why? Because those directors of those virtual oil, gas, and mining companies are the funders of political parties. And that's where you don't understand. I'm trying to give you little keys that you can check yourself. And I hope for your children, for your grandchildren, you will look there and make these people, politicians, accountable. The police, how many restrictions have they had in, the, in their uh, sort of manpowering where they're restricted to, to street patrols? Some of them haven't even got cars. Some of them resort to paper cutouts outside supermarkets. If that's what this country is all about, where our intelligence services are protecting this country, then there's something wrong. Look at the financials of organized crime, and somewhere in each of those companies, you'll find a politician or a member of the House of Lords. It's knowing where to look. 
knowing where to dismantle them and understanding the mechanics of organized crime. So, any questions? Anybody want to ask me a question about what other oil, gas and mining companies are taking the mic out of everybody? All the politicians. This everybody knows Tony Blair was Siri Lung. It's when he was in charge of the way on that one. Yeah. When he left, built the diamond mines and given so much land. The young London mining company were built. Now you just you just mentioned Tony Blair. Part of my Lung was yes. given millions and millions and millions. Freetown. I was there in February. I know about Tony Blair. This, this, this gentleman just mentioned Tony Blair. Let me tell you something. Very few people would uh, remember that Tony Blair was made an advisor of a company called UI Energy. UI Energy was operated by a bunch of South Korean con artists who then had uh, oil drilling rights in northern Iraq. Nobody will understand the importance of that. Who were the other advisors for that UI Energy? Well, there was the ex-Australian Prime Minister, Bob Hawke. There was uh, uh, members of uh, George Bush's military advisor team. They were all made advisors of a South Korean fixed-up uh, corporate that had access to the oil rights in northern Iraq. And you're telling me that the Iraq wars weren't about oil? No, they weren't. I'll tell you a little secret that none of you know. None of you know. I've been in touch with a whistleblower, a very senior, well-respected, retired civil engineer. That gentleman is a man that I hold in high esteem as an engineer because of his honesty and his friendship with myself, and he put himself at risk, at great risk. That man, I'm not going to name him because he's uh, under the Official Secrets Act, which I don't uh, uh, try to cross the line on, but that gentleman gave me insight information that in 1989 a certain young conservative member and that would be David Cameron went to a place called Pelandaba now I know where Pelandaba is because I was a mining engineer for goldfields of South Africa as well as an Air Force engineer Pelandaba was the apartheid government's secret nuclear weapons uh, experimental facility just outside Pretoria in 1989, I am told, and I will repeat what I'm told, that David Cameron went with a, a guy called uh, Sir Ken Warren and Dr. David Kelly. Do you know that name? Yes. Anybody know Dr. Yes. David Kelly? Yeah. And they went to Pelindaba to arrange, which was all pre-arranged, that before the 1994 general uh, election and handover to the ANC government, nine 20 kiloton battlefield ready gravity drop nuclear weapons would be moved from Telandaba and out of South Africa before the handover to the ANC. Now because I was also security cleared to work with nuclear weapons as in the WE-177, I also know the destructive power of nuclear weapons. Those nine weapons, six were sent to Chicago for decommissioning and three were purchased by a section of Tory grandees. Those names, I have some of the names, not all of them. And it was an organized, orchestrated purchase where they were onward sold to the British government at uh, extended price, which meant that these people were making millions in that purchase. I am told Dr. David Kelly went to Pelindaba he uh, organized the uh, weapons cradles and the fitting into 20-foot uh, ISO containers of the nine weapons. And those nine weapons were then railed to Durban Harbor. Dr. David Kelly would then hand over cash to the, uh, the sellers, which was Arms Corps of South Africa, and the dealer, in-between dealer, which was John Arnold Breeding Camp an ex-Rhodesian arms trader. The other company involved in Britain was a company called Astra Holdings. Astra Holdings was run by an MI6 spoof called uh, Stephanus Adolphus Koch. 
and he was imp uh, implicated in various other uh, misdealings with Midlands Bank as their weapons dealer and weapons procurement dealer for that bank. I am told that Dr. David Kelly was all ordered using a UOR, which is an urgent operation requirement uh, invoice, to purchase three cylinders from Arms Corps via Astra Holdings, which were then uh, railed from Durban onto a ship, and Dr. David Kelly, apparently from my source, moved those weapons to Oman for the retake of Kuwait. Those weapons were then put in a storage facility and uh, they were used as a deterrent and a retaliatory weapon should Saddam use chemical or bio agents against our coalition and UK forces. As we know, no such weapons were used against us and so those weapons remained in a storage facility until the cessation of hostilities. I am told by my source that Dr. David Kelly, at the cessation of hostilities, went back to organize the movement and uh, onward shipping of those three 20 kiloton nukes to Chicago for decommissioning. When he opened up the containers, they were missing. I am told by my source that those weapons found their way into Iraq and then onward into Syria. I am told this, I swear, by Almighty God, that this is the information that's been given to me where our politicians are accountable for those nuclear weapons that were lost. I'm further told that one of those weapons was detonated by North Korea on the 23rd of May 2009. Check the internet, it's there. So where was the money trail for these particular three purchased nukes? It's in Hansard. Have a look in Hansard. Hansard, June the 22nd, 1993. 17.8 million was deposited into the Conservative Party accounts by a person called John Arnold Breedenkamp under his tobacco company's front shell company. 17.8 million. And that was the kickback and the money trail for those three nuclear weapons. If you have a constituent MP, whether it be Labour, Conservative, Lib Dem or UKIP, you can ask them to contact me to contradict what I'm telling you now. Because one, I have the forensic correspondence between myself and the Iraq Inquiry Secretary and further every single politician in this country. Because it's my duty. Anybody that loses a tactical battlefield ready, gravity drop a nuclear weapon needs to be put in front of a jury or in front of an inquiry to ascertain on what conditions were those weapons purchased and what conditions they were lost and where they went and how much they were sold to North Korea for. It's your future, everyone, your children, your grandchildren to understand that in a few short months you will have a pen. It's the biggest weapon that you can have. But before you put a cross in a box or a tick, go and speak to your, 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 your politician. Ask them, ask them if this is not fact. I see you're recording it and taping it. Brilliant, do it. I have been put on various websites and interviewed on a few radio shows. Those radio shows are accessible to anybody. You can look for it. Just look up 788-790 Finchley Road. Just look at uh, Three Lost Nuclear Weapons. Just look at Dr. David Kelly. You will find some of my research work. It's not hearsay. It's not conspiracy. I've dealt with these people. I've dealt with them. I know who they are. And I know the reach and the bottomless pockets that they have to protect them because I've been threatened. They've bashed on my door late at night with giving me uh, solicitors' letters to take my stuff off the internet. I won't because it's my duty. And I will never fall back on that. Thank you. Children, uh, can we just come out here? There's a gentleman here that would like to take your evidence.
Yeah. Okay, push it over. It's not bad, not for me, but if you've got some you got evidence to give yeah. this gentleman. Yeah, we need to know who Okay, we'd like to know who we're giving the evidence to, so there's some accountability. Yeah, we do, John. Right, okay. Alright? Yeah. So it'll be a little while. Okay. Come with them. We'll yeah. Do you know exactly what it is we're giving you here? I have no idea. Okay, we'd like, to, we'd like to explain to you what we're going to give the BBC today. So, Gordon, would you like to just explain? Do you want to use this? Can you write using this? No, sorry. Do you want to hold it, Gordon? Hello, sir. Go on, Gordon. I think yeah. we need to get it on. Introduce this man here. Gordon Bell. Can I get you to speak in the mic? Um, can we get you to speak in the mic? Oh, okay, sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Speak up! 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 Spe
The biggest political scandal in UK history. Okay, inside the trading, money laundering. Uh, this is Sharon from The Crossroads. I'm with John Patterson at the BBC. Um, we've just had some very interesting developments, so I'm going to let John explain. Right, over to you, John. Very fortunately, Sharon recognised my voice. He said, oh, you're the chap that's been making the videos with Gordon Bowden. Gordon Bowden is an ex-RAF whistleblower. He spent 13 years of his life trying to expose the biggest fraud, money theft, and laundering syndicate in this country, where the assets from the British Treasury have been stolen and transferred into offshore accounts using fake oil, gas and mining companies registered at 788 790 Finchley Road. And today, Gordon Bowden walked into the BBC with the evidence and is the biggest I can't even explain what this means. He's walked into the BBC and the BBC, for the first time, have got privy to these forensic documents. When Gordon comes out, I think we're going on next. I don't know where we're going, but the fact that he 